after the fog finally cleared out. And joining us uh, to talk more about how fog affects not just takeoff, landing, and flying is Phil Derner. He's the president and founder of NYC Aviation. Good morning, Phil. Let's first talk about what kind of conditions do uh, tower, does tower control need to have when it comes to rearranging arrivals because of the fog? Well, a lot of it has to do with arrival rates, and arrival rate is the amount of aircraft that can operate into an airport in a given hour. So in optimal runway configurations, maybe an airport can receive about 45 aircraft. But then once weather starts to deteriorate, the amount of aircraft that it can receive may dip below that, maybe down to 28, for example. But if there are about 35 flights scheduled in for that hour, you're going to have some drip over there that needs to be delayed out. And then air traffic control ends up putting forth traffic management initiatives in the form of ground stops or ground delay programs to keep those aircraft delayed before they even depart so they don't have to sit in holding patterns and ultimately end up diverting. So that's why we often uh, hear that the weather matters at the destination. When we talk about ground delays uh, and ground stops, it seems like LaGuardia, Philly, and San Francisco are those airports that are most prone to fog. Is it because of their location? Well, New York is, is a very, uh, it's almost like the Bermuda Triangle of delays because you've got three major airports 10 miles from each other. So their big variable is that all the airports are so very close together. Every airport, I mean, fog in itself is not a, uh, a challenge to operate in unless you have other variables. San Francisco is a major, major offender because uh, they have close in parallel runways in nice weather. Those planes are able to come in simultaneously in what's called a parallel approach. Uh, when weather starts to deteriorate, they can't come in side by side that close anymore. They need to be staggered in or go in one at a time. So that hourly arrival rate reduces very rapidly. And then that's why we see, I mean, sometimes on a daily basis, ground delay programs going into San Francisco. When you talk about uh, fog not being much of a challenge for pilots, I assume it's because of the technology. Yeah, there's a lot of technology that's out there instrument landing systems, and depending on uh, a, a bunch of different variables, uh, what can operate. I mean, every single runway has an approach, and one runway could have multiple approaches. So uh, there are variables to determine what the minimums are, the required minimum amount of uh, horizontal visibility and vertical cloud cover that an aircraft can land in. So, uh, so much depends on the navigational equipment that's at and functioning at the airport, what the aircraft, individual aircraft type is capable of, what the airline is authorized to do, what the pilot is authorized to do. And then it's very cut and dry. You are legal and safe to land or you're not. All right, Phil Derner, president and founder of NYC Aviation. Thank you so much for your insight this morning. We've got fog concerns across the Midwest.